Hey there, welcome to Neuropod, a channel covering everything related to Elon Musk's brain-computer interface company, Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and in this update episode, I'll share the latest news about the company and highlights from Neuralink patients. First, I'll share some video from Ashley Vance, giving us a look at Neuralink's work in creating a fake brain proxy so they can perform testing in their labs before doing any testing in animals or humans. Then I'll share more about these implanted devices eventually helping with back pain and neck pain. Then you may have caught some clips of Mark Zuckerberg talking at Meta's conference about the new VR glasses, but he also talked more about the integrated neural interface. The Meta Neural Band is a huge scientific breakthrough. I'll play the full clip during the episode where you can be the judge of that. And then I'll share a clip of Nolan, the first Neuralink patient, speaking at an event playing a game of chess against a chess master. I'll discuss the growing reputation of Barrow Neurological Institute, the hospital where the first Neuralink patients had their surgeries performed. Then several team members showed their support for ALS Network in Napa this weekend. I'll share a quick status update on the fact that Neuralink now has implanted in at least 12 patients. And then stick around to the end of the episode because we've got a hint for where Neuralink's product lineup is headed next from this job posting. And if you miss the fact that the team is expanding trials into Great Britain, or that Sam Altman could soon venture into the world of brain interfaces, or that the speech restoration study is going to start soon, make sure to check out last month's September Neuralink update. Also, as an incentive to subscribe, I'm getting back to what I used to do, which is I won't add extra ads until each episode gets 1,000 views. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be one of the first viewers. First, let's hear from Neuralink team member Fran. The surgeon comes up to me and goes, I thought that was an actual person for a second. I've had surgeons tell us that it's the best proxy in the world. Nobody makes anything like it. Please, can you sell this to us? This not only indicates the Neuralink team is capable of custom building basically anything they need from scratch, but their tools are also in high demand, specifically because of the quality. I'm Fran Romano. I'm a mechanical engineer on the surgery engineering team here at Neuralink. It's also fun to tell people that don't work here that I make fake people. We build physical 3D models that we call proxies that mimic a person's anatomy and gets mechanical properties pretty close to what we want them to be. The Neuralink surgery doesn't exist. We couldn't copy something else, so we were developing the procedure itself. We figured out how to take CT and MRI data and convert that into physical things that our neurosurgical staff could practice the procedure on. Neuralink has been doing all they can to make sure they run tests in the lab environment on fake brains before they do any testing in animals. Only once they've already completed lots of testing and are confident will they actually conduct the human trials. This is evidenced by what they show here where they showed Brad's family the fake brain material in the hospital. So this is the exact, uh, the exact mask shape. And... So for our third participant, we got the scans, and two weeks later, we did the actual surgery. Can I show Brad? Yes, definitely. Can I see it? It's probably more So in between that time, we built his head, did two full mocks on his head before the actual surgery. Basically, his actual surgery was the third time our neurosurgeon saw that anatomy. The motto is, is no surprises. We want surgery to be boring. And if you're practicing on the person's anatomy the day before the surgery, there's very few surprises. You can check out the full video on Ashley Vance's show called Core Memory that I've linked in the description. Next, you may recall this post from Elon last year, where he says, I am increasingly convinced that Neuralink should prioritize making an implant that can eliminate back and neck pain, would greatly improve people's happiness while awake, as well as enhance quality of sleep. But you may not know, Elon dealt with major back pain for around eight years. He once fought this professional sumo wrestler, where he says, managed to throw him, but it cost me smashing my C5-C6 disc and eight years of mega back pain. 
finally fixed with a C5-C6 disc fusion. So he's aware of much of the struggle folks with severe back or neck pain face day to day. And the main reason I bring this up now is there are some rumors circulating that Elon himself may have gotten a Neuralink implanted to help with this pain. This is bogus, given that Neuralink is currently working on helping paralyzed individuals, people who have lost the ability to speak, and restoring sight to the blind. I personally expect they will have a device ready to address back and neck pain in more than five years, but hopefully it's sooner as Elon wants to prioritize making this type of implant. Then Mark Zuckerberg gave the opening keynote at their annual Meta Connect conference just a couple weeks ago. If you've been a longtime listener of Neuropod, you know Facebook and Meta have been working on virtual reality and brain interface devices for nearly a decade. They've made more progress on their glasses, which Mark discussed here. The next generation of Ray-Ban Meta glasses. While he's sharing this, keep in mind what Neuralink is building. Now, glasses are the ideal form factor for personal super intelligence because they let you stay present in the, in the moment while getting access to all of these AI capabilities that make you smarter, help you communicate better, improve your memory, improve your senses, and more. The direct implanted brain interface is going to take things to the next level. And in the future, when you can completely trick your brain into seeing or hearing new things or producing false memories, I think it'll be clear having an AI plugged directly into your brain is going to be much more useful than what Mark discusses here. That being said, glasses are indeed a pretty nice way to visually take in information, which is what Neuralink is planning on doing with their Blindsight product, shown here. Glasses are the only form factor uh, where you can let an AI see what you see, hear what you hear, uh, talk to you throughout the day, and very soon, uh, generate whatever UI you need right in your vision in real time. Which raises an important point. The ability for us humans to perceive the real world is majorly limited by our biology. We rely on our eyes, ears, nose, fingers, and mouth to sense what's happening in the world around us. But if we could connect to very high fidelity sensors, we could have superhuman capabilities. Think seeing in infrared, or being able to touch super hot objects without getting burned or hearing microwaves. It's going to be really important that the sensors we connect to have the best possible sensors. Optimus, we're looking at you. But there's more to cover. And then there's the neural interface. Every new computing platform has a new way to interact with it. So for the glasses, we are replacing the keyboard, mouse, touchscreen, buttons, dials, with the ability to send signals from your brain with little muscle movements that the neural band will pick up so you can silently control your glasses with barely perceptible movements. What he's saying is true, and it'll be cool to play around with this technology. I do wonder, though, if he and the Meta team will ever have the willingness and even courage to build a fully invasive brain interface. The Meta neural band is a huge scientific breakthrough. We have built a neural interface into a durable, lightweight, comfortable, and good-looking wristband with 18 hours of battery life and is water-resistant. All the tech giants are eventually going to create a brain interface of some kind, at least if they want to innovate and participate in the future. Then this is a clip from Nolan's interview at Fortune's Brain Tech Conference, where he shares the reason he decided to share his name and face publicly. Like you said, I was under no obligation to reveal my identity. I chose to a couple months in because all I wanted to do was tell the world how amazing the technology is. I wanted to give a lot of people as much hope as possible, as much hope as it had given me. Um, and I just wanted to be a good advocate. I wanted, that's why I'm here, is to you know, spread the word, show people how well I'm doing, and uh, give people with disabilities something to look forward to. Uh, because it has changed my life, and I know it's going to change the lives of so many people um, moving forward. So During this interview, Nolan also talked about how he currently has a full schedule between attending neuroscience classes 
and working alongside Neuralink in the trial, and doing public speaking engagements. Think about how fantastic that is, that he gets to have the freedom to do all of this. His life is entirely different from just a couple years ago, and I'm happy to report that that seems to be the case for all of the patients. Where Noland is going to do the thing that is amazing and play chess with his mind via the computer. We're going to have this game go down on chess.com and start automatically here in just a few seconds. You can watch my interview with Nolan and his mom at the link at the top of the video here. Then this was posted by Barrow Neurological Institute's president and CEO, Dr. Michael Lawton. The Barrow reputation is evolving from being a world-class neuro institute that delivers specialized, personalized care to patients at the highest level, to one that is on the absolute cutting edge of high technology and futuristic medicine. We're earning that reputation from our partnership with Neuralink, from being the site for the first ever fully robotically implanted brain-computer interface device, and from the seven patients implanted here the most such patients treated globally. And this is but one example among countless other advances happening here. This trial needed somebody just like Nolan. So many people think about this device as something that's scary. And Nolan stepped up. He demonstrated that this was not something to be feared, but something that would change lives in a positive way. He just got pushed right through the entire process and got selected as the first candidate within a couple of months. It's very exciting stuff, and I'm really happy to be a part of it, and I'm happy that they chose me. That's an amazing gift that Nolan has given humanity, to step forward first and make it easier for everyone else who's following. On the day of Nolan's surgery, there was incredible energy here at Barrow. There were people coming from all corners of the world, from the top of Neuralink to the top of Barrow, and all of us were focused like lasers on this operation and getting this device into Nolan's brain safely so that this could make history. When I first met Nolan, it became obvious that he was the guy for this. He was brave. He had no fear about the procedure. He wanted to help humanity. Hey, what's up? He's a happy person. He has a great sense of humor. He connects easily with people. <laughs> I can only imagine what it must have felt like for Nolan to see the activity of his brain flashing on the computer screen. For us, it was like we were unlocking this secret language that never before we had access to. In day one of being able to get crystal control, he beat the world record. Next, we have this post from Romina of some of the Neuralink team supporting the ALS network this weekend in Napa Valley. Then we have this update on the Neuralink patient count. There are up to at least 12 patients. They posted this saying, we just completed two surgeries in Canada, our first procedures outside the United States. This marks an important step towards bringing our technology to more people around the world. We currently have active studies in Canada, United Kingdom, United States, and the United Arab Emirates. If you're interested in participating in a current or future study, we invite you to join our global patient registry at neuralink.com trials. And Elon followed it up with this message aiming to restore limited sight to the completely blind next year. And then we have a hint about Neuralink's aspirations based on this job posting. There is an opening for a software engineering intern on the Hippocampus team. For some context, the Hippocampus is a small seahorse-shaped part of the brain located in the temporal lobe on both sides of your head. It plays a key role in forming new memories, helping you learn things, and navigating spaces, like remembering directions, or where you parked your car. It's like the brain's filing system for turning short-term experiences into long-term storage. Damage to it can cause issues like amnesia, as seen in conditions like Alzheimer's disease. I would expect this is a signal for the next conditions Neuralink will address. Or, at minimum, it shows they're making progress on inserting electrode threads into deeper brain regions. I've learned that abnormalities in the hippocampus contribute to many mental health disorders, often involving dysregulated memory, emotion, or stress responses. Therefore, this falls in line with this slide from the update presentation, where DJ discussed their goals to focus more on psychiatric disease and epilepsy in 2028. Conditions like schizophrenia, major depressive disorder, PTSD, severe anxiety, OCD, or addiction could be addressed. Neuralink is still just getting started. The company's impact is severely underrated.
So please consider joining the team maybe as an IT systems engineer or as an intern. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Make sure to also hear Audrey's story. She's the first woman in the world with a Neuralink implant, and she shared her detailed story exclusively here. So I ended up becoming friends with the other schools around us because there's not that much in the dating pool when I was uh, 15. And I became interested in a boy at Block High School. It still feels magical because it really, it really humbles you and feels like magic that, you know, I've watched the X-Men. It's like, I'm Professor X, you know, I can move stuff with my mind. So the little kid in me feels very magical. But as I'm using it more and more every day, it's almost like it's a, like I pair up with it. I just, as soon as I get on the computer, it's very much intuitive, just knowing what to do and, and using the right finger and being patient at first because, you know, it takes time. Uh, and then just learning to be accurate and it, it becomes so natural to the point to where like, I almost kind of forget that you have to visualize moving your arm, that it just becomes like, oh, you're just moving the cursor. And the whole action of moving tends to kind of, to kind of go away.